Stanford is offering a completely free six-week Python course. Each student completes a final project, like creating a tic-tac-toe game. But with GPT-4, I was able to create the code for this game in less than 30 minutes without writing a single line of code, just copy and paste from GPT-4 output. So do introductory Python courses have any value in the era of GPT-like models? In this video, I'll talk about in detail about this course and how to sign up for it. Then I'll briefly go over how I use GPT-4 to create the tic-tac-toe game. And finally, I'll discuss whether it's still worth it to take a course like this one. There are chapters in the timeline below, so feel free to skip to any parts that interest you. The Stanford course is called Code in Place 2023. If you want to register for it, you have to register by April 10th and I'll go into the application and see what it looks like. And the course takes place from April 24th to June 10th of 2023. The Code in Place course is the first half of CS106A, which is a Stanford course to uh, teach Python. It's online for free for everybody and it's taught with the support of thousands of teachers. And that's, I think, what makes it different than just watching tutorials on YouTube. There will be um, uh, students and then there will be teachers who will be able to help the students with any problem. So it's kind of interactive. There's a lot of human interaction. And I think that's what the value truly is. The important thing is the timeline. You have to register by uh, April 10th and fill out the applications and do some prerequisites. And then the class starts in April 24. And I think they want only people who are uh, serious about this, people who are able to dedicate like 10 hours per week um, to do this uh, assignments. Is there any certification? I think no, that you don't get like a certificate that you get it from Coursera, but you'll be able to create some code that uh, you can use as a portfolio. And they say it's hosted by Stanford, but you can probably also put it on GitHub. And uh, the idea of what kind of things you will be able to create are like uh, this uh, Pong game, uh, which was uh, coded by one of the teachers. And here it shows you that the meanings will take over Zoom. So there'll be a lot of interactive between humans. In the application, you put in a location. So I hope they put you in a place with people who are geographically close to you due to time zone differences. And here's the syllabus. So we have uh, six weeks and it goes over what you are uh, learning. The first two weeks are coded in Carol, which is like a graphical interface for uh, learning how to code. It's not as intimidating as just writing code in Python directly but it has a similar structure to Python. So that's really nice. Then in weeks three and four, you use the console. And uh, in weeks five and six, you use uh, the graphics interface. And at the end, they want you to do a final project where you can really uh, let your creativity shine and try to uh, code lots of different things. I'll go into examples of what people do for these final projects in a little bit. They say they offer the course twice, once in 2020 and once in 2021. Overall, they had uh, 22,000 students. So the student to section leader ratio is one to 10. So for every 10 students, there is one section leader who's able to help you. And this kind of shows you the heat map of uh, where the students are coming from. As you can see, the students are coming from all over the world. Most of them probably from the United States and Europe, but the, the, you have also students from South America, Africa, and Asia. So let's look at the application. You go to the main page. I'll put the link uh, in the description below. You hit student application and then you can sign in with Google or sign up with your email. Once you sign up with your email, you get to this window. Note it's due April 10th. So you have to do all of the steps on this page uh, by April 10th. First, you have to fill this form with your basic information. Then learn some uh, basics about the Carol to kind of show them that you're serious and you want to learn and then do some basic problems. So let's look at the application. They ask for some really basic information like your name and why you do want to take this class. Then where you are located, uh, which country so they can kind of match you up with other people in your general location, how much time you are willing to dedicate to this course, and then you have to kind of commit that you are willing to put in the work. And then uh, uh, they ask you some personal questions of why do you want to learn, what is your experience and stuff like that. So nothing too major, you can fill this out in five minutes. So here's my plan. I signed up for the course just like any other student. I'm planning to do all the work manually without any use of GPTs. And then on the side, I'll also try to complete all the assignments using GPT-4 or ChatGPT and see how much easier it is, how much faster it is, and if I can learn more by using GPT-4, or am I gonna learn more if I do everything manually? And throughout this process, I'm planning to make videos, so if I find anything interesting, I'll make a video about that. So uh, if you don't want to miss out on this content, make sure you subscribe to this channel. At the end of the class, the students complete the final project, and here on this uh, website, I'll put that in the description below, is the project list. And as you can see, there are lots of projects. I think there is over 1,000 projects here. 
and I wanted to test if I can use GPT to kind of replicate some of these projects. So I kind of clicked through and um, the one I settled on was try to do a tic-tac-toe game. I think I found at least five or even more students who did a tic-tac-toe game. The two uh, good ones that I found are this one, uh, 550 and 267, and they kind of have a very similar game. This one has a slightly different background than what I created, it has a blue background, but you can see it kind of works the same way. You have a three by three grid, then you click around with X's and O's, and whenever somebody gets three, then uh, they win or it's a draw. So in this case, it's a draw, it's a game is tied. Here's a very similar one. The grid looks a little different, um, but it, again, X's and O's. And whenever somebody wins, it tells you whether the X player wins or the O player, or if it's a tie. So let me show you what I did in GPT-4 to create the tic-tac-toe uh, code. I started with this prompt. Uh, white actually supposed to be right, that's a typo. So write a Python code for a tic-tac-toe game that is operated by a mouse. If the code is too long to fit in one response, start writing it and then ask for a prompt keep writing the code use as many responses to write a working code as you need i forgot to write it as you need so this is a key thing if you're trying to get a code out of uh, gpt4 if you're asking for something longer so previously i tried to make a tetris game uh, if you just write, uh, please write a code for a Tetris game, it will tell you that it's too long for this GPT-4 interface. But if you tell it to just keep writing and split into multiple responses, then it will give you the full code. Here's the response. It starts writing the code, keep writing the code. So here it writes like a first part of the code. Uh, it tells you you have to make uh, images, uh, X image and O image. So I made that in Canva and uh, import it into the library. And then it tells me, remember to say, keep writing the code and for the next part. So I write, keep writing the code. And then it gives me the second part. And now it tells me that it's already working, but it tells me that it doesn't support the draw scenario, which is kind of dumb because in tic-tac-toe, draw is by far the most likely outcome. So then I tell it, write a section of the code for a draw scenario and tell me where to insert the code. And this is really important because if you are a beginner, who's trying to write some code, you don't know what to do with the extra code, where to insert it. So then it keeps going and gives me the check draw kind of uh, definition. And then it updates the game loop and tells me where to put it. So then I went to PyCharm with this code and that was this tic-tac-toe one game. And when you run it, it runs, but I get, uh, I get the grid, so everything is good. But when I click with the mouse, I don't get anything. So I got the grid, but the game doesn't work. So I went back to GPT-4 and said, after the game board shows up and I click with the mouse, nothing happens. And it's very polite. It apologizes every time when you have a problem and it tells me to input some more code. And I try, still nothing happens. Then it gives me some other suggestion. Then I still said nothing happens. Then some more suggestion with the, the mouse button issues and things like that. Still nothing happens. Then it actually tries to debug the code. So what it does is uh, it changes the game loop and you kind of have to have a little bit of coding knowledge to figure out what's happening. If you are a completely beginner, you don't know what's going on. And it uh, adds here uh, kind of debug print codes. OK, so if there is this issue, this will spit it out in the console and then you can tell it where the problem is because you can't see the whole code that you paste into PyCharm. So that's kind of the limitation. If I could just keep pasting the entire code that it generated back to it and like debug this, debug this, that would be a lot easier. So um, there's a little bit of a workaround. Nothing happens. Uh, it's still nothing shows up and then it gives it one more try. Then I paste that and still nothing happens. Now it decides to do something pretty interesting. I apologize for the continued issues. I'm providing a revised version of the tic-tac-toe game code that should work correctly. Please replace the entire code with the following version. So essentially what it decided is that everything we've done so far, just scrap it and start over, which was probably the good decision, uh, but still pretty surprising. So I made a new uh, file in PyCharm and I imported this, okay? So there is uh, quite a bit of code. If you have a little bit of coding knowledge, you can see that this is kind of like incomplete code. So I say, seems like you ran out of space. Keep writing the code starting again from definition. So I don't want it to kind of start writing from here. Let's just start from the definition of the game loop. So it says apologies for the truncation. I think it just ran out of uh, space for the response. And it gave me the entire game loop uh, definition again. And then I pasted this into uh, uh, PyCharm. Then the X's and O's started to show up, but they're showing up in uh, wrong places. So we went through a bunch of debugging, back and forth, back and forth. And then the problem persisted, but I kind of just told it in a plain language. I still have the same problem, give me more suggestions. And it just kept giving me more and more code. And then we 
kind of had a misunderstanding between me and GPT-4. It says, apologize for continued issues. And it even uh, identifies the misunderstanding. It was thinking that the images did not fit in the squares, but it was actually happening that I clicked in the corner square and it was putting the X in the middle. So it asked me which one of these issues is happening. First, the images are placed in the completely wrong cells or the images are placed in within the correct cells, but the position within the cells is slightly off. So it was the first one. So I clicked in the corner and put it in the middle. So I say it was the first and then it uh, gave me more code to replace what was happening. And from that, I got a working code. But the only problem was that when somebody won the game, it just wrote it in the console that uh, player one or player two won the game. And I wanted uh, that to be written over the board or under the board somewhere. So it's pretty clear. So I asked very simply in the game window, at the end of the game, can you write a text who won the game? And it just does exactly that and tells you where to put the code. And that's the final code that I put in PyCharm. So we, here we have tic-tac-toe three. And let's run that. So it pops up a nice little grid three by three. So let's start in the middle. You know, uh, you put it here and let's uh, let the X's win. So it tells you uh, player X won. Now let's play it to get a draw. So we'll run it again. So let's do X, okay. Let's uh, now we'll defend properly. So X here, defend here, X here and it's a draw. So the game is fully functional, and I think this will satisfy the requirements for the final projects for the class. If you would like me to recreate more of these final projects with GPT-4 and see how I do it, what kind of prompts I do, please write it in comments below and I can make more videos like this one. So finally, is it worth to take a class like this one? On one hand, you could look what I did with GPT-4 and I was able to recreate the entire final project within maybe half an hour in uh, GPT-4. And if I knew how to write prompts better, I could probably do it in 10 minutes or less. So is it worth it to learn how to code in Python or any other language? Or is it a completely useless skill, like doing long division in the age of calculators? Surprisingly, I think the usefulness of courses like this one actually increased in the GPT era. Let me explain. Before GPTs came on stage, coding was still kind of hard. Let's say you took this course like three to five years ago, and you would have to put quite a bit of effort to create a tic-tac-toe game. Let's say if you are a new programmer, it will take you a couple weeks, maybe a month to create this game. And that's a huge achievement, something you should be proud of. And people who really identify with coding would probably go on and code more and maybe even enter like a computer science career. But for people outside of this uh, world, I think they'll be like, well, that was a lot of work to create something so simple. And they'll probably just end with this. I'm like, okay, I learned how to do some coding, but it's just too complicated. It's not really my passion. And to create really huge and sophisticated tools, it will take way too much effort for me to learn. But now I can create a tic-tac-toe game in half an hour with GPT-4. And I believe the tools and the fundamentals you can learn in a class like this, you will be able to debug and kind of analyze what the GPT-4 will give you. And you will be able to create much more sophisticated things a lot faster. And that will give you kind of motivation to uh, build better and better things. So I hope you join me in this class so we can learn how to build amazing things together. If you found value in this video, please give it a like so YouTube shows it to more people so more people can learn how to code.